Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today it is another day of It's a Crafty Life 15 Days of Videos. Today we are using Pinterest in, to inspire us. So I found this layout on Facebook um, and I pinned it on my Pinterest. And so I'm going to be using that as my jumping off point for inspiration now. Things go in a completely different direction and it actually really doesn't turn out looking anything like this layout, except for um, one little element, I would say. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm starting with a Vicky Booten stencil, a flower stencil, and some texture paste, just white texture paste. Um, I think I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Texture Paste. It's my favorite. Um, and a palette knife. Now, I'm not using the whole stencil. I'm just using pieces of it and kind of putting it all over the page. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to do it all on camera because it does take a little while. I'm also going to dry it with my heat tool off camera. Um, be careful when you're drying texture paste or modeling paste because if you get too close, it can burn it and also it can make it bubble up. If you don't want that texture, then um, just be careful with the heat tool. So now we are back and it's all dry. I have these three watercolors. This is what I wanted to start with, um, these three colors. And they are kind of like a pearlescent watercolor. Okay, here we go. Now, I start with them. I put a little bit of water on the paper. I am using the Vicki Booten Foundations paper, by the way. It's the best for mixed media, hands down the best paper. Um, and so, yeah, I'll have the supplies that I'm using linked down below. If you guys are interested, I would so appreciate you using my links. Um, that helps support my YouTube channel. So these colors, they weren't doing it for me. They were entirely too light. Um, and they just, the blue kind of just didn't look really great. It looked kind of like like a muddy blue. I don't know. I don't know what was happening. Um, so I kind of just went over that with a paper towel, got most of like the wetness up. And then I pulled out my color, my watercolor palette. These are my good watercolors. Um, I made this palette myself with two watercolors. And I have so many colors on here and so many like vibrant colors. There is also a, <clears throat> a mixing pan on one side of the watercolor set. So I am actually kind of, I will end up mixing colors together to create other colors. So this blue was not quite the blue I wanted. So I'm mixing two blues together to make the blue that I want. And then I'm going to be mixing the blue and the pink on the page to create a purple. So you'll see me go with the water sprayer and getting clean water from the mason jar here. Um, when you're watercoloring, you want to be careful, especially when you're using like a lot of colors like I'm going to be using. I actually have two um, water jars, <laughs> cups, I don't know. One has my dirty water in it. So I kind of like get all the paint off of it and then... Um, yeah, get all the paint off of it. And then I'll use the clean water to go on the page with if I need to add water. So I'm just going back and forth with the colors here. And honestly, when I started with this layout, this is not what I was going for. I was not going for this like super vibrant, like, I don't know. The layout at the beginning, as you could see, it was very soft. The watercolors was very, super, super soft. Um, but... I ended up loving this and y'all know me. I love vibrant colors. I love bright colors. They just make me so happy. So I just went with it. Um, and that's the fun thing about using something as inspiration. It's just sometimes to just get things working in your brain, um, to get an idea of kind of what you want to do. So definitely use your Pinterest pens, use your pens. You don't have to do the exact same thing. You can do something completely different, but maybe you might just use one element from the layout <clears throat> or, 
more from the mood board. Um, and yeah, so here you can see that I'm mixing the yellow and the blue together to create green. Um, again, at first I didn't think that I was going to go all the way up the page. I thought I was just going to do the bottom and the top. And then I started going up the page with the yellow and I was like, Ooh, I like that. So I decided to go all the way up the page with all of the colors kind of in the same row. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. It's first thing in the morning. Um, and so there's that purple, like right in the middle of the pink, which it's okay. Um, but I'm going to end up kind of trying to fix it as much as possible. I'm not going to, I don't think, actually, I think I do leave all of the watercoloring in, but really it's not hard. I think a lot of people are intimidated by watercolors, um, just back and forth with paint and the water. And if you need more water to make it more flowy, you can spray it with a sprayer, which definitely helps, or you can just get clean water and add to the page. Um, and I personally like using a round paintbrush. You can see there that I'm spraying it. Um, and yeah, it's great. So I'm mixing and then I'm going to end up starting to go over into that pink to create that purple and um, just going back and forth and adding that water um, and just mixing those colors. Just be careful to try not to create mud. You want to work with colors that are going to work together, right? So obviously blue and pink make purple, blue and yellow make green. So that's kind of why I had that blue there in the middle. And really, if you have a blue and you have a pink and a yellow, you're going to be able to get four colors out of those. Um, so you don't need all of the colors that I have over here. Um, you can have a smaller watercolor set and still be able to create a beautiful vibrant background like this um, these watercolors that I got or that I have that I'm using are from an art store I can't remember what the brand is but they're in like the tubes and I bought the palette off of Amazon and just created my own palette and I absolutely love using this um, so now I'm just going to go back in over this with some water um, and you can see now that my, my clear water is not clear anymore. Um, so you really want to be careful with that and adding it into like your purple or pink because it's green. And so it would not really, it won't blend very well if you're not careful. Um, so again, I'm adding more water, adding more pink over here because I kind of want that purple and the blue, like I'm mixing the blue and the pink again. Um, I wanted there to be more of a, like a purpley there. So I'm just going back and forth until I, until it like makes me happy until it looks the way that I want it to look, I guess. Um, it's definitely not perfect, but a lot, the middle of this layout is going to get covered up with the photo and my paper and embellishment. So that's okay. But I do, um, I am like working with this quite a bit just to try to get that purple in there. Um, and now I'm super, super happy with it. So I'm going to use the heat gun and this takes quite a while, but look with the magic of editing, it's all done guys. Look how pretty that is. Um, definitely vibrant <laughs> for sure. Um, so in the layout that I am using as my pin Pinterest inspiration. Um, she has this paper from Vicki Booten's color study collection and it's like ripped. Now off camera, I fussy cut a whole bunch of flowers y'all like so, so many flowers from one of the, um, Vicki Booten papers from color study. And I'm going to be using those um, to layer behind this. And she did have that on her layout. I did watch her YouTube video as well. She has a YouTube video. Um, and to be honest, 
she she probably had two sheets of the floral paper um, because she had some of the actual floral paper behind this and then also had the fussy cut flowers I did not have enough of that paper I only had one sheet so I just and just decided to just do the fussy cutting um, flowers and I did a whole lot of them I am using a piece of this pink paper, which was left over from a previous layout that I created, I think here on my YouTube channel live. Um, and I just matted that just to give a little bit of something behind the photo. And I did print the photo with a really small white border around it as well. So now I am just going to take these flowers and I'm going to tuck them so they're peeking out from behind the stripe paper. Um, I definitely could have used some ink to ink the edges on that torn paper, um, but I forgot. She, I don't think she did. I think she left hers white, but I'm pretty sure she went back through with like a darker blue watercolor to like behind the flowers to kind of add some shadowing. But I obviously couldn't do that because I did like color blocking with my watercolors and also mine are super vibrant so she made hers super 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 like soft and light which is so beautiful and I love that look I'm just really not great with that <laughs> I'm really good with like bright colors I just love bright colors they make me so happy so like I said, definitely went in a different direction, but it was fun to use her layout as some inspiration. Um, and I cut all of these little leaves, but since I had so many flowers and they were just, there was no room for leaves. I, so I didn't use the leaves. Um, and that's okay. Um, definitely going to need to use a liquid glue and I glued all of those down off camera so you guys don't have to sit and watch me. Um, but when you have a mixed media background like this, you definitely want to use liquid glue because things are not going to stick down. Um, I use my ATG to glue down the stripe paper and you're going to see here in a minute that I'm actually, I think, um, I think it's going to be on camera. I actually had to go back in and use liquid glue behind it because it started coming up. So when you're doing mixed media or using texture paste, you definitely need to use liquid glue um, <clears throat> to help hold that down. So I did put some foam behind the photo to just pop that up. And again, I'm trying to use those leaves and I'm like, you know what? It's just not going to work. It's not looking right. It's okay. Um, and so I do not have any of the ephemera from this collection. I only have the sticker sheet and the chipboard stickers. And so I am going to pull this sticker out for the title and it says, be colorful. Um, I am going to pull out some foam and put foam on the bottom half of that uh, just because the photo is up on foam. So there is the title. There's one little piece there that I forgot to put foam on. So we're going to go ahead and adhere that down. Make sure everything is stuck, I guess. See, here's where I saw that I needed to put glue behind the paper. Um, so just be careful when you're uh, doing the layout like this um, because you definitely want your things to stay glued down. You don't want them to be coming off in your uh, scrapbook pages, I guess, in your albums. So I'm going back to the chipboard sticker sheet and I really liked this little like word phrase. It says, any day spent with you is my favorite day but it's really, really long. So I ended up cutting it up into three pieces um, and I am using liquid adhesive because I never trust the adhesive on chipboard. <laughs> I just don't guys. Um, so I'm going to glue that down kind of right under the title overlapping that flower. Um, and I just love that. I think it's super cute. And then it's also bringing that black in and that gold. So I'm going to bring in that gold now in a couple more places with some hearts and also with some of the like little tiny dots little tiny gold dots on here um, using this chipboard piece I will end up putting the date on that but I didn't do that in the um, video um, and I'm going to use some chipboard butterflies and I'm going to 
think, yeah, I'm going to end up popping them up on some foam um, because I felt like they were just getting lost up there with the flowers. And so I'm going to put some foam adhesive behind those to pop those up just a little bit. This is just a photo of my daughter and I at the ball field. Um, this is going to go in my Project Life album. So this was her spring break and we were going to the ball field. I think we went like three days to help her practice for softball because she had softball tryouts. And um, this was when we were just taking a break out of the heat and in the shade, taking a water break. Um, and I wanted to take a photo to document that. And so these little um, like gold circles, they're like little confettis, but they're so cute and they just add, I feel like they just really added something to that stripe paper. And so I'm adding those all around the stripe paper just to add a little bit of interest, but also to add that gold in there um, because I had it in the words and then I had it in the hearts, but I really wanted to just add it in another place um, just to bring it all together. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and so I am looking for another sticker. I really like this one. It says today was the perfect day. And then I also am going to pull in a, another chipboard sticker and it is the little, um, saying right here, it says, do your best. And then the, this one I'm going to pull in is the little chipboard camera. And I'm going to put a little bit of foam adhesive behind it because it's going to be overlapping the photo here. And um, then I am going to end up putting some black splatters on this layout just to bring black back into the layout because black is in the title and in the tiny words under the title. So I just felt like it needed more um, black and I always love a good black splatter. I just think it's so fun. So make sure you cover your photo up. You don't want splatters all over your photo. Um, and that's going to be my layout for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel if you are enjoying any of my videos. Um, Again, don't forget to check out the people linked down below. I have some of my patrons joining me this month for the first 15 days of videos. And if you're interested in getting another 15 days of videos after this 15 days, if you want the full 30 days, head over to my Patreon. It'll be linked down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to spread love and be kind. I hope that you all have an amazing day. Bye.